Hi everyone, welcome back to my video on control systems as well as the code series. Let's look at one potential problem that we may be facing when we are dealing with the simulating the systems with the PID controller or in another way which is uh, we are dealing with the systems with uh, very very small time constants. Let's say we have this uh, PID controller uh, expressed in the command line using a PID object and this PID is actually designed in such a way that okay we have these three coefficients K, P, K, I and K, D uh, respectively and now let's look at what happened when we try to simulate the systems with this PID controller. So this is one way of uh, simulating the response in Simulink. Basically, we are still using a step response in here. And then this part here will form the PID control, whereby the first gain block here will actually contain the value for KP. Next will be KD and KI. And we'll be using this uh, one OS as the integrator parts and also this uh, DU over DT to approximate the response for the S term, the integrator. So we add everything up and then go through this uh, transfer function and we would like to see the output. Okay, so let's run this simulation and we will stop at 0 0.01 second. Let's see the code that visualizes the output of the simulation. The first part of the code here actually is the one which generates the PID transfer function that you have seen earlier. This part of the code will extract the output from the sim out blocks. Then I'm creating two subplots to compare the result coming from the step command as well as the simulating. So let's see the result. Okay, on the left will be the result coming from the step response. And then this will be the result that is actually coming from the simulating. So you can see a very big difference in here. And it is particularly annoying that you find everything has been done correctly, but the simulation result coming from two different methods are entirely different. So what is actually the reason behind this? So the first answer they would like to give for accounting this difference here is actually because of this S term. Now how do we actually realize this S term in the previous uh, simulating file is that we are using the derivative term Okay, to approximate the response of S simply because we cannot be realizing a pure S term in simulating. And of course, this is the first reason okay, why you actually see the difference okay, between the simulation result because the derivative term and coupled with the linearization effect in this simulation while it's actually been solving the response will not end up with a result similar to the pure S term. Hence, this method of using the derivative term okay, as part of the PID controller is being discouraged. Not to mention that a pure derivative term will actually cause problems when you are dealing with the systems with rapid changes, okay, especially a system with the very, very small time constant, and that will create a lot of uh, huge spikes uh, after the derivative blocks. So what we need to do now is actually we need to revise this representation of the PID controller by using the PID controller with the filter. We're going to revisit the definition of the PID controller here, which now I'm going to include a new term called TF and I'm going to set this TF to a very small value like this. Basically, this TF will be the coefficients of the filter. And I'm going to add this TF to the definition of the PID controller, which is going to give me this. So you can see now a new TF term has been added in here. And then this will be the approximation that we use to actually approximate the derivative term, which is more realizable in practical. You can also see that this TF element here, it needs to be very, very small. So that at the end, if this TF can be approximate to zero, then this entire term here, okay, will be able to approximate to S term. And next, what we need to do also is that because of the derivative term in the simulating is not proper, 
Hence, what we need to do is to replace this part of the system okay, with a PID block. Right? So let's try to configure the PID block. Okay, so we key in the P, I, and D respectively according to our definition. So I'm going to use the parameter that we actually define in the code. And next, you can notice the difference, the slight difference between the filter coefficient in here. Earlier, you see it's a T, F, but now the representation in here will be different. So what we need to do is to do a little bit of conversion from the TF to N. And you can observe that based on this representation, your N is actually equals to 1 over TF. Okay, so that's all will be the configuration for the PID block. And we will simulate the response again. So let's see the output now. We'll be using the same set of the code for the plotting part and let's look at the result Nani? so firstly for this step response is generated from the step command you can see that it is also different from what you observed earlier simply because now you have changed the PID with the filter and that is normal for such change but what about this? we should have done everything correctly to define all the coefficients in proper, but how come there is still a difference in between the simulation results coming from the simulating as compared to the step response? So here comes the second answer, okay, that which accounts the difference between the step response and also the simulating result. Now, what we can do here is that we can also observe the time of the simulation and also the rapidness of the changes. We can observe that actually this system, okay, the resultant dynamics of the system has a very small time constant and hence the system actually change rapidly. And by default, simulating is actually using a varying step size, which is decided by the simulating itself. And sometimes it may not be proper to account for such rapid changes of the system dynamics. So to account for that, what we can do here is that we will go back to the simulation model and we actually change the simulation parameters. Go to the solver and change the solver type to fixed step. You can change the solver to ODEA, but the most important thing is this uh, fixed step size. So what we need to do is to actually choose a sufficiently small step size so that we can actually account for the rapid changes in the system dynamics. So this is particularly important for the system with a very very small time constant. So let's change it now and rerun the simulation. One thing that you should be noticing here is that once you change it to the fixed step with a very small step size, your simulation will actually take significantly longer as well. Alright, the simulation is done and let's revisit the output. Okay, so now you can see both simulation result looks alike now. Hope for the few tricks that I've shown earlier helps in your troubleshooting. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.